Greetings Internet, my name is Chris and this is my trials guide for the Ethereum Archive. And the Ethereum Archive is the easiest of the current three trials that are in the game. Uh, the second easiest being HRC and then you have um, Sanctum Ophidia. Now HRC stands for Hellra Citadel. Anyway, as you can see here, um, we're somewhat lined up uh, in three separate groups. This is something you want to do prior to entering. Uh, you want to make sure that your tank stays in the middle group and that you have a healer in both the left and the right group. You can sometimes do without in the right group, uh, but the left group uh, it helps a lot to have a healer there. Each group consists of four people. You can see I just <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> I just made someone enter uh, because you can sometimes sometimes troll people to enter. <laughs> uh, it's quite funny. Uh, but this footage you're seeing here is um, from a somewhat casual run with a bunch of really really good players. So you see some tactics that uh, are not always used. Um, first off, you're gonna run off, run through th this here. If you're doing a speed run, you tend to negate these uh, atronachs and just keep running. You can see we're somewhat confused as to what to do. Um, so we should just enter <laughs> um, without even having a true battle plan. But you can see we end up killing those. If you're doing a completion run, I recommend killing those because you have to run back. Then you have the ice room, which is this here. If you run into one of those uh, small cyclones there, you'll get frozen place and you can get out of it by dodge rolling. If you have rapid maneuver, you can also use that to uh, negate the effect of those. Here we have two um, frost atronachs. If you're doing a speed run, you will pull them up the stairs as you can see me doing here somewhat anyway. Because if you're doing a speed run, the Atronox that you let live, the fire Atronox, they'll be right on your tail. Then you continue up these here, these steps, and when you get up the next tier of steps, you'll get introduced to a mechanic that nobody really uses. It's this uh, pillar of light. If you stand in the pillar of light, you don't take any uh, lightning damage. This third group here, uh, if you're doing a speed run, you tend to run to the right of it and someone negates it. And then the tank runs straight through. But then again, because we're doing a casual run, just a completion run, uh, we're just killing everything. After this here, you'll get introduced to the first boss. This is where you'll see the mechanic that nobody uses because um, people figured out that if you use a Nova um, or a Veil, that will negate the damage uh, and you can heal straight through it. Because the first boss has this mechanic where he will do damage to the entire group. So, uh, As you can see, I have blurred out my chat and the ad names of any of my friends just for privacy reasons. This is the first boss, the Storm Atronach. If you want to boost your DPS on this guy, you can you can use um, Expert Hunter from the Fighter Skill Tree. Morphed into, most preferably, Evil Hunter, which will return um, stamina to, to you every time it procs. Here in the chat, I've disabled the chat, but we're just discussing what to do. I, I get a little bit, I don't know, restless. So I, of course I walk backwards into the boss because reasons. Anyway, as a tank you want to turn him around from a group. The group want to stack right behind him. This is AA. Stacking is the keyword here. At least for the first two bosses. You can see the damage is crazy on these, uh, these DPSs here. They have so good damage. <laughs> so this thing just dies instantly. Like he's about to do his uh, AoE damage thing there, but he di didn't manage to get it off because he died too fast. 
this is where the groups come in to play. Um, I recommend having at least one Dragonite on the right group. You can see I was in the middle. In the middle, uh, you can't kill these guys before the left and right groups are done. Uh, since they all respawn when they die. Just uh, go into stealth before you go on the pad, that way you won't aggro them. And then walk backwards, just a little bit. You can see we're out of the range of the enemy, so they won't aggro to us if we stand up. Left group and right group are done, so we engage in the middle. Then you find a pad. It's best for the middle group to take the middle four, the left group to take the left four, and the right group to take the right four. Otherwise you end up having this musical chairs thing where people have to fight to get the last spot. Alright, you come back to where you killed the first boss, and then you're gonna run over this bridge here. The mechanic, or the tactic that most people use here is stacking on the rock you see ahead of us. And then aoeing the shit out of these things. And then you have Dragon Knights chaining in the uh, adds that are out of the side. When you split up, the left and right groups are generally just gonna kill stuff. No real finesse to it. There's sometimes a kill order for the second split, the left group, usually tends to kill the uh, nullifier first, since it's a healer, but other than that, it's quite simple. Uh, when we did the split, if I've edited this correctly, you should have seen the two other perspectives, just so you know what to, to expect. Now, the reason why you want a Dragon Knight on the right group is because the second split that we're coming up to after this boss here. The second split um, have these imps that are somewhat far away, so it helps that you can chain them in. Again, musical chairs. If you're running with a group where everybody knows what they're doing or know each other, it's usually a lot smoother. The second boss here, you can use uh, Evil Hunter on it again from the fighter skill tree. This gives you more damage when it procs. You want a Nova for the, well, Nova and Veil vale for the ground pound here. And then you want a Negate for when he starts spawning uh, chain spinners. You'll see one come in here in a second, I think. But you can see that's the Negate that's up. You used to be able to use Seed Shield on this guy here, but they've uh, nerfed the effect on that one. So it doesn't work in this boss. Again, a Nova goes down before he does his ground pound. And we also have Veils on the ground. It helps if you have a person calling out these things. Should be in the gate here in a second. Ah, oh, no. We just kill it. As soon as you kill the boss, he adds despawn. Alright, this is where we'll come up to to where left and right group actually have some sort of little bit of tactic to them. I'll just uh, show you footage of those as well. Middle again, everybody crouches. Even though you can see one guy is not crouched. Actually two per people are not crouched. But you want to crouch here because if you aggro immediately, sometimes people will die. And since this is a trial, that will add five minutes to your time every single time someone dies. You can see they're standing up, so of course we take acro. If this happens, uh, just go in as a tank, pick up all the acro. You can on this group here, you can kill every single one of them except except the last one, with these uh, somewhat ghostly creatures here. Um, and if you do that, they they won't respawn, and you can just keep one alive until left and right groups are done. And the left group. You're gonna kill the nullifier first, and then the chain spinner. In the right group, you're gonna chain in the 
imps. When everybody are, uh, are ready, or left and right are done, you can kill the the last enemy in the middle. Or if you haven't accroed them yet, you can engage them and kill them. You can see here in the middle we're just playing around with them. All the bridges go down. Here you usually mount up. This helps a lot if you're doing a speed run. Um, but be careful with your mount and with uh, rapid maneuver if you're using that because you can sometimes run off edges. And again, if you die, that adds five minutes to your time. Now you'll see uh, a somewhat irregular method being used here since we only have two people that go for the hats that spawn in this guy and then everybody just going on the main boss. Uh, this boss here will split first into three, then four, and then five after a certain amount of time. And usually you want to kill these because if more than one are alive, everybody will die, even if you have Nova and Veil down. But the tactic we're using here is generally used in speedruns, where you have one person go on the left ad, one person go on the right ad, then you leave the middle ad alive and drop a Nova and everybody blocks. This only works if you have really good damage in your group. You can see here currently we're just, well, not really doing much, <laughs> we're just talking, I think. Of course, again, I've removed the uh, audio. Um, again, for privacy reasons, same why, reason why my chat is uh, blurred out. Something you also, also want to watch out for on this boss here is probably the biggest killer in this dungeon, and those are the raindrops. As a tank, I do range taunting. Just keep my uh, inner fire, or inner beast, I should probably morph it to. Keep that as the only taunt you use. Watch out for the red circles on the ground again. They do about 2.5k damage. You can see here we split. We only have one person on left and right. And the rest are just attacking the main boss. When left and right are done, the boss should probably be down to about 60 or so percent. Left down, right down, Nova goes down and everybody blocks. And then everybody just focuses on the boss again. Again, you gotta keep moving around to watch, to watch out for those uh, raindrops. They will, they will tell, kill a lot of you if if you're not um, focused on what's going on. Now this is usually where uh, inexperienced groups tend to uh, tend to get stuck in this uh, trial here. Here we didn't have the right DPS to take her down, so we're splitting to kill the ads this time. This is the usual mechanic you use. You tend to split the group into two here, well technically three, with your tank and main healer in the middle, and then one through six on the left, seven through twelve on the right. Those will be your DPSs. You only really need one healer for this trial to be honest. It's nice to have off healers for the sides, but if everybody know what the everybody knows what they're doing, it uh, it's not really necessary. You see, I pop my uh, horn here, sturdy horn. As I mentioned in my uh, tank guide video, it's um it's a really good ability, especially in trials. It gives you more magic, so you can do more abilities, more stamina, so you can do more abilities. <laughs> more health so you can survive more. So all around really good and ultimate. Here again, uh, you mount up. Watch out that you don't run off the side. I've seen that quite a few times. You get bumped on invisible rocks and, and so on. Here again, you get to this thing here where you have to uh, 
all stand on a pad. This means you have to be 12 people until you get to after this point. So if you're less than 12 people, it's not doable. It used to be that you could use the Storm Atronox, the ultimate, uh, to actually activate some of these pads here. Also a good tip if your pads aren't working and sending everybody everywhere. Somebody's probably not standing on it or somebody has, hasn't activated it. It, it helps if uh, you jump, if, if that should happen. Uh, again, here you can just see we're just probably just talking at this point. Maybe I'll cut this out, maybe not. Who knows? Alright, you can see we get transported through. We all spawn at the exact same point. Then engage all the ads here. You tend to kill these all at once by grouping them together. If you have the undaunted skill called Necrotic Orb, morphed into Mystic Orb or something else. That re really helps in big groups because when someone activates the synergy and it's hitting a lot of uh, NPCs or mobs at the same time, you all regenerate a lot of magicka. It's especially useful in stuff like uh, Sanctum Ophidia, where the groups are just massive. And then there's a second wave before the final boss. It contains imps. You want to kill the imps first. They do this sort of lightning prison. And then afterwards you want to kill the nullifiers and chain spinners. It helps if you don't have super good healers to hold block and walk away from the group if you get the lightning AoE effect on you. Otherwise everybody around you will take damage from it. When we kill the last tier, everybody splits up into a circular pattern. Make sure that you're not standing close to someone else, since the boss will do a lightning that will sort of, um, well, it would chain between people. If you're a melee person, you still want to be aware of this. And just uh, make sure you don't stand too close to anyone else who's melee. As a tank, you aggro the two axes that spawn immediately. And then you have either a chance of getting a quick axe or a slow axe. Basically, it's the amount of time it takes for the next axe to spawn. You have to keep the aggro on these because if you let these loose, anyone who has them on them will probably get fucked. You see, that is a quick axe. It came after about 30 seconds. Uh, a slow axe can be up to a minute even, uh, but I always seem to get the really quick axes, unfortunately. You can see here, I'm not even focused on a boss now. To my group, I asked them to call out when a boss gets to 32%. This helps me survive because I move in before the rest of the group, who will move in at 30%. The boss itself will spawn these... Uh, miniature copies that you have to kill quickly because they do group AOE damage. And the boss will also toss out these mines that you can detonate by walking into them. If you leave the mines up, they will become corruption, which will slowly spread over time. And if that's in front of you or in the middle of the board, that's really bad because you have to group up on top of the boss. The boss will not move around, but always stand in the middle which makes it pretty simple. Once the boss gets to 30%, you all stack on the boss. You drop uh, you, you drop damage lowering uh, a ultimates like Veil or Nova. Uh, and these help the healers keep everyone alive. If they're not down, uh, you will die during the burn phase. You can see I move in the fourth axe spawns just then. And then she starts during the burn phase. First off, she's going to knock you down, I think, four or five times. Removing everything. The fourth time, yeah, four times. Then you drop your first Nova, your first Veils, and then just burn her. If you have uh, Execute Abilities, it helps using these. 
Um, Nightblades have an execute in their assassin tree. Oh, there's some lag there. Uh, sorcerers have the mage's fury, and if you have a two-handed, you also have the uh, execution ability. I think it's called. Maybe something else. You can see there, we killed it. We get the timer, we get the total amount of deaths, and that's it. Thank you for watching.